Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbraham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. I had the opportunity to introduce our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr., who's gonna be sharing a message this morning, True Soul Food. I know you're gonna enjoy the message. So you wanna go ahead and grab a friend, grab a coworker, and let them know that the Word of God is about to be preached. You know what time it is. Let's go.
church family. To those of you who can, would you please stand for the reading of God's word. I invite your prayer for meditation to the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4. Verses 1 through 4. St. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. If you have it, say amen. amen. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command, these, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You may be seated. Speak, Lord, and help us to listen. For I ask it in your name. Amen. Verses 3 and 4. And when the tempter, that is the devil, came to him, he said, If thou be, the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Subject for this morning, true soul food. True soul food. At the youthful age of 30 years, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ resigned from his occupation as a, as a carpenter in order to devote all of his time and efforts to the gospel ministry. Once again, at the youthful age of 30 years, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ resigned from his occupation as a carpenter in order to devote all of his time and effort to the gospel ministry. His cousin and forerunner, John the Baptist, resided in the wilderness, clothed in Campbell's hair and surviving on locusts and wild honey. 
Primarily, John preached continuously one message. And the message was repent. For the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, as John baptized those who came from Jerusalem and Judea and from the region round about Jordan, he spoke to them these significant words. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, as John, as John had uttered these most sacred words, he was astonished to discover that his next candidate for baptism was Jesus. John at first felt unworthily reluctant. But when Jesus said, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness, John obeyed his holy command. Now Jesus intends for us to learn that in this act, he was identifying himself with fallen humanity. And that each one of us, whether high or low, rich or poor, righteous or unrighteous, must be baptized baptized by the Spirit. This is why Jesus told Nicodemus late in the midnight hour, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you want to enter and see the kingdom of God, you must be born not only of the water that is the word of God, but also of the spirit. A lot of people think because they have been baptized in water, they can do and say anything and everything they please and still go to heaven. But I got news for you. You must be born again. Now, the record states that as Jesus came straightway out of the water, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him, and a voice from heaven said this, is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And I think my brothers and sisters, there are no greater words that any true born child of God can hear than that God is pleased with his life. Some of us I said, some of us will go out of our way trying to please man. 
only to find out there are some people you can't please no matter what you do and remember nobody can please everybody that's why I decided if I don't please anybody I want to please God I want to walk so God is pleased I want to talk so God is pleased I want to teach so God is pleased I want to preach so God is pleased I want to do my best so God is pleased I want to stand the test until God is pleased with me. I wonder if you're praying with me. Now, as we journey back to our text, the records state that Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now a wilderness is a deserted area, an uncultivated land, a trackless forest, or any isolated place may be psychologically defined as a wilderness. And oftentimes, I wonder why Jesus would resolve to retire to this isolated and abandoned locality. But I found out my sisters and brothers If you are to be used of God, if you have dedicated your life to God's service, if you are to be instrumental for the Lord, there are times in life when you must get away from the crowd. Can I get a good amen? If you don't mind turning your neighbor and say, neighbor, there are times in life when you must get away from the crowd. I know what the songwriter meant when he said there are days I like to be all along with Christ, my Lord. Yes, uh huh. Sometimes, woo, I, I, I want to steal away into my secret closet, close the door, and stay there all alone with the Lord. Mm, I want to talk with him and tell him all about my problems. I want to consecrate and rededicate my life to him. Not only that, but I want him to talk to me. Uh huh. I want him to tell me where he will have me to go. Tell
tell me. Somebody say, tell me. What he will have me to do. Tell me what he wants me to say. Uh -huh. I want him to mold me. Uh -huh. And make me what he will have me to be. If you don't mind, look down your pew and say, neighbor, I want him to, know, to mold me and to make me what he will have me to be. I wonder if you're praying with me. Now, now possibly, now possibly another one of the reasons why Jesus retired to the wilderness was so that he could be alone, fast, meditate, and talk with the Father. And of course, after he had been there for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says he was afterward and hungered. This is when the tempter, this is when the tempter, who was Satan, appeared on the scene. And his purpose was to tempt Jesus. I said his purpose was to tempt. Jesus. And you know, my brothers and sisters, none of us are above temptation. I believe I say that again. None of us are above temptation. Each Christian is tempted. From time to time. Now being tempted. Uh huh. Does not make you a sinner. But sin is committed. When one yields to temptation. That's why the hymnologist wrote. Yield not. To temptation. For yielding. Is sin. But I want to inform you. My brothers and sisters. No matter what temptations. Confront you in life. Remember. If you look. To Jesus. He will carry you through. Can I get a good amen? Now as Satan tempted Jesus, likewise he tempts every Christian in three forms. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Through the lust of the flesh. He said to Jesus. Turn these stones. In the bread. For he realized. For he realized. Jesus was hungry. But Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, by material things alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth 
of God. Through the pride of life, Satan said, uh huh, cast thyself down. For it is written, he began quoting scripture. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. For Satan knew most anybody would take pride in being lifted up. And in the lust of the eyes, he said, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. For Satan knew that the love of power was prevalent in every man. But what Satan didn't know is this is where the love of power came face to face with the power of love. And through every temptation, Jesus had an answer. And Satan, being defeated, left the presence of Jesus. For if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. But let us concentrate. Concentrate, if you please, on the first temptation. On the first temptation. If thou would be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But Jesus said, It is written, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. This is where we arrive at our subject, true soul food. For you see, man can't feed the soul. For man does not know what the soul is. Only God knows what the soul is and where it is. Only God knows what the soul needs are. Therefore, only God can feed one soul. David said he restored my soul. But Jesus said in order for man to live, the soul must be fed. For he said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the food... For the soul is the word of God. Now in my clothing, let me tell you about God's word. First of all, there are three parts to God's word. There is the Old Testament 
the New Testament. And Jesus, who is the living word. Sometime, sometime when I'm laboring and bearing the burden in the heat of the day, I open the written word to Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Jesus said, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light great God almighty sometimes when my way gets dark and when my enemies are all around me I I open the written word to the 27th Psalm. Oh Lord, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell sometimes when I get impatient and I feel I've gone the last mile of the way I open the written word to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 where it says they that await on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint some Sometimes when my heart gets trouble, when my heart gets trouble and my faith gets weak, I open the written word to St. John chapter 14 verses 1 through 3 where Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also but I can't close until I tell you about the living word Jesus is the living word I said Jesus is the living word for John said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God 
the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made do I have any worshipers in here oh Lord to Ezekiel he is a wheel in the middle of a wheel to Daniel he is a stone hewed out of the mountain to John the revelator he is the king of kings and the lord of lords to Isaiah he is wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh Lord, and I want to tell you, and I'm closing down. I thank God for Jesus. Do I have any worshipers here? I said I thank God for Jesus. You see, Jesus is our light in darkness. Jesus is our blessed Savior and Redeemer. Jesus is our joy in sorrow. Jesus is our I hope for the morrow. Jesus is our strength when we are weak. Jesus is our song in the night. Jesus is our bridge over deep water. Jesus is our rock in a weary land. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the answer to our questions. Jesus is the solution to our problems. Jesus is a shelter in a time of a storm. Jesus is the captain of our salvation. Do I have any worshipers here? I say, do I have any worshipers here? Jesus, yeah, he is the foundation that never shakes. He is the truth that never lies. He is the friend that never forsakes. He is the conqueror that never loses. He is the supply that never quits. He is the fountain that never clogs. He is the light that never dims. He is the deliverer that never disappoints. He is the king that never ages. He is the shepherd that never overlooks. He is the beginning that never ends. He is the comfort that never departs. He is the physician that never charges. He is the star that never fails. He is the relief. He is the help that never hinders. Do I have any worshipers in here? I'm talking about Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say neighbor. He's talking about Jesus who is the living word. Do I have any worshipers in here? He is. You don't mind me telling you who he is. You don't mind me telling you, tell you who he is. He is. Yeah. The joy. Woo! He is the joy that never subsides. He is the master that never intrudes. He is the way that never deceives. 
He is the hope that never fades. He is the rock that never moves. He is the strength that never weakens. He is the wisdom that never misleads. Oh Lord, I thank God for Jesus. Do I have any worshipers in here? Come on, come on. Open up your mouth and thank God for Jesus who is the living word. I said Jesus, he is, he is the living word. He is, he is, he is, he is, he is, he is, he is the bridge that never collapses. He is the anchor, oh Lord, that never fails. Oh Lord, and I want to tell you the reason why I'm still standing. My anchor, yeah, my anchor is in Jesus, yeah. The reason why I can go through sickness, the reason why I can go through trouble, the reason why I can go through tribulation, the reason why I can go through distresses, because Jesus, Jesus is my anchor. Yeah, Jesus is my anchor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the reason why I can go through the storm because Jesus is my anchor. Oh Lord, the reason why I'm still standing in spite of my naysayers because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is my anchor. Come on, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, Jesus, yeah, is my anchor, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, who is the living word, He is the anchor. He is the anchor of my soul. And the reason why I'm still standing is because Jesus is the anchor of my soul. You see, some of my enemies had written me off. But the reason why I'm still here is because Jesus is the anchor of my soul. No wonder someone, someone rightfully said, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Somebody help me say this. On Christ. Come on, somebody say on Christ. Come on, somebody say on Christ. Come on, one more time. Say, I'm on, say, say, I'm on Christ. On Christ. The solid, 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 
the solid, the solid, the solid, the solid, the solid, the solid, the solid, the solid, rock, 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 I stand, I stand. I stand, I stand, I stand. All of the ground. All of the ground is sinking sand. True soul food. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone. That is, man shall not live by material things alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see, sisters and brothers, only God can feed your soul. Because God knows what the soul needs are. He knows exactly what your soul need. And you know what? When I'm down in the dumps, I mean when I'm really down in the dumps. He knows how to restore my soul. Aren't you glad about that? That God knows how to restore your, your soul. He knows how to strengthen your soul. Oh, I don't know about you, but so many times I felt like thrown in the towel. I mean, I was between a rock and a hard place. But because my anchor was in Jesus, he restored <laughs> He restored my soul. He strengthened my soul. Look down your pew and say, neighbor, in spite of what you're going through, tell them you're going to make it. Come on, come on, come on. Tell them one more time. Say, neighbor, in spite of what you're going through, you are going to make it. I said you're going to make it. I don't care what the devil says to you. The devil is a liar. You believe God. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know about you, but I believe I'm going to make it. <laughs> I said, I don't, I don't know about you, but I believe I'm going to make it. Because I got Jesus on board. I got Jesus in my life. And because I got Jesus in my life, no storm is going to take my ship down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name in this house, Lord. Come on, one more time, look down your pew and say, neighbor, 
I am anchored in Jesus. I'm anchored. I'm anchored. I'm anchored. I'm anchored in Jesus. In spite of what the doctors have said, I'm still anchored in Jesus. In spite of my situation on the job, I'm still anchored in Jesus. In spite of the fact that my children are going haywire, I'm still anchored in Jesus. And let me just say this in closing. When the devil shows up in your life, just tell him, it is written. Don't, don't argue with him. Don't argue with him. Just give him the word of God. Just tell him it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written I'm going to make it. It's written. Hallelujah. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus, he never, never fails. I said, Jesus. Never, never fails. Jesus, never fails. He never fails. Heaven, heaven and earth will pass. Away, but Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus, never. Never failed. That was that was some that was for somebody. I don't, I don't know who that was for. I don't know who that was for. But Jesus wants you to know that He never fails. I don't care about the report you just received. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing. There's nothing beyond His power. There is nothing beyond his ability. There is just nothing too hard for God. So neighbor, put a smile on your face. I said, put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your face. Because if God did it for you back then, he can do it for you right now. I said, if God did it for you back then, He can do it for you right now. 
and I'm through but can somebody help me give God a healthy a healthy good hallelujah come on open up your mouth and give God a good hallelujah 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 If you don't mind, look down, look down your pew, and I want you to point your finger at them. I want you to point your finger at that, and I want, this, is what, this is what I want you to tell them. Tell them, it's done. I feel that in my spirit. I said, I feel that in my spirit. Somebody needs to know, God wants you to know, it's done. It's done. It's done. Now give him praise. Give him praise. You may not be able to see it now, but God says it's done. God says it's done. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, yeah. It's already done. It's already done. Woo! It's already done. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, don't let the devil steal your praise. Don't let the devil steal your praise. I said, don't let the devil steal your praise. It's done. God says it's done. Hallelujah. Son, pray I need thee, oh I need thee, I need thee. I, I, want, I want the organ to speak to you, because that's your prayer to the Lord. That's your prayer to the Lord. I want the organ to speak to you, that's your prayer to the Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. Speak to us, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak. Hallelujah. I come, I come, I come. I come. <laughs> to Do you need him? Oh, I need thee. <laughs> I need him. I need him. Yeah. The hour. Do you need him? I said, Do you need him? Oh, he'll bless you now. Oh, bless. He'll bless you now. I said he will bless you. I said he will bless you. Somebody didn't hear me. I said he will bless you. I said somebody still didn't hear me. He will bless you.
one more time, son. Oh, we bless your name in this house. We bless your name in this house, Lord. Yes, yes. Just one more time, son, for the Holy Spirit. Just one more time for the Holy Spirit. Come on, open up your spirit. Open up your spirit to the Lord. Let him minister to you. Let him minister to you. Open up your spirit to the Lord. Let him minister to you. Bless. Bless me now. Hallelujah. presence there is fullness of joy in the Lord's presence there is fullness of joy Lord we thank you for your presence thank you for your presence thank you for your presence You know just when to restore us. You know just when to strengthen us. You just know when to bring us out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you praise. give you glory because you have done marvelous things on our behalf. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless your name in this place. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord.
yes, Lord. Where everyone please repeat after me. Say, Lord, I thank you for my blessing. Time is it, Ebenezer? It's giving time. Amen. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. Welcome back. I know you were encouraged by that word, true soul food. And if you were encouraged, we invite you to just leave us a comment and let us know how the Word of God is impacting your life. We would like to take this opportunity to uh, share Christ with you. If you've never accepted Him as your personal Savior, we invite you to do so now. Hopefully through the message and the messages that we've been sharing, we've shown the importance and have given you the importance of why you need Christ in your life. At Ebenezer, we believe that is our number one mission, and that is to share the good news of Christ and to win the loss for the kingdom. If you've never said this prayer, I invite you to share it with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I recognize that I am a sinner. I recognize that I am in need of a Savior and that I cannot save myself. I am depleted and I'm lost without you. I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross, to shed his blood, to go to the grave, but on the third day he, was rose, from, he rose from the dead with all power in his hand just for me. And I accept your free gift. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ into my life and I ask him to come in and to change me. My brother and my sister, if you said that prayer, then the Bible lets us know that you are saved. Acts 16, 31 says, And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. We invite you to go to our website, which is at ebcwilmington.org. On the contact page, just leave us your email so that we can stay in contact with you and let you know what's going on here at the ministry. And if you did accept the, accepted Christ as your personal Savior, we ask you to just, just leave us a message and let us know so that we can welcome you and make sure that you have the resources necessary to grow in your walk with the Lord. We're on social media and Facebook. We're at ABC Wilmington. And just go ahead and click on that follow button. We're also on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. I want you to go ahead and just click that subscribe button. So once again, we thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience and being a part of our worship audience. If you're ever in the area, we invite you to come and worship with us. We have taken every precaution to make sure that your worship experience is a safe experience. We're located at 2200 
North Claymont Street in Wilmington, Delaware. And we'd be so excited to have you to be a part of our worship experience. So once again, thank you. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless.